Our patient is one year old male, 10 kilogram in weight. Uh, he was asymptomatic, uh, referred to us for his continuous murmur. On physical examination, there was continuous murmur at upper left sternal border. And the ECG was uh, on sinus rhythm. Transthoracic echocardiography showed the PDA with left to right shunt, and the diameter of the PDA is 3.7 on 2D and on color flow images it was 5 millimeter. With CV Doppler uh, there was continuous flow with uh, 90 millimeter mercury peak systolic gradient. Left heart structures was enlarged and Z score was uh, 5. Our intended intervention is transcatheter occlusion of this PDA. <laughs> Right, go ahead, please, from the cath lab. Can you hear us? Yeah, we hear you. Do you hear us? We can see the echo and we can see you uh, as three operators. Okay, hello. Me, Levant, Abdullah, and Shevket. And the lady, Neslihan. We are four operators, only for one year old baby. Too much doctors, only one patient. First, uh, as you know, all you know, uh, first thing first is in the transcatheter closure of the congenital defects is PDA closure. So it's simple, but uh, instead of showing the uh, manipulations, we first uh, want to show you uh, the, before the beginning that, uh, all the things. First thing first is in PDA closure is echocardiography. I hope you are seeing the four chamber view, right? Uh, we're seeing four chamber, yes. Yes. Uh, in four chamber view, in fact, telling us what how about the PDA is and uh, which device we would, we should use. For my opinion, as all you see, there's a left heart enlargement. That means a lot of uh, shunt from left to right. So this is not a small PDA. And oh, now it's not very high or hypertensive. PDA because left heart enlarged. So that means, to my opinion, it's not a good case for coil occlusion, that it's a good case for device occlusion. Okay? Then after that, uh, it's better. To my opinion, every operative must have uh, their own echocardiography before uh, starting the closure procedures. As you see from the supersternal view, there's a PDA. The upper part of the ampulla is a little bit protrusion to the aorta. This is an asymmetrical conical PDA. Do you see? We can see the supersternal view, yes. Yes. That means it's a good case for what, what is your opinion, our audience? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, is, there any, are there any, uh, um, is there any advice to uh, be given? No, I think that they're just waiting to hear from you. Yes. It to is the afternoon, so it's siesta time. Okay. For us, for me, it's a very good case for <laughs> ADO1 closure. It's, it has a enough ampulla, narrowing, asymmetric conical. It's an ideal case for P, uh, ADO1. And to my opinion, the ideal case is also ADO1 general for PDAs. As you see, we can see, show you the color Doppler. Uh, PDA shunt. There is a, a pressure gradient between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So, what can we do? I am deciding to uh, close this uh, PDA with the ADO1. That's quite but, reasonable. Yes, and now I will be careful about the protrusion of the uh, ductal ampulla into the aorta, so not to make a coarctation. Right. Right, Johnny. Then, what did they, we continued? In fact, we can have uh, sometimes uh, after many years, we can close, because the baby is one year old, we can close it only tran uh, to transvenous root, but for demonstration, we enter to the pulmonary, uh, femoral vein and the artery. Then, the lateral position, Anjou. Anjou'yu gösterin arkadaşlar. İlk görüntü. 
We can see uh, the fluoro, yeah, thank you. Now, can you see? Yes, we can see it, yeah. Yes, just as we see uh, in the echocardiography uh, suprasternal view, look, asymmetric conical ductus, a little bit protrusion and narrowing in the superior part of aorta, right? Do you see? Yes, but there's no posterior indentation. Yes, so it's good case. And we measured if the ductus narrows part is about four millimeters. Four, okay. Okay, then uh, 308 and 309 for that's all. And you can compare with the five French catheter. The catheter is five French. So you can that's imagine. That's three millimeters. Yes, that's, it's about three times more than the catheter, okay? Yeah. So uh, we decided to uh, close this with a device. Which device do you advise? Or if you go to sleep, we can go to work. Sorry, what size were you planning to put in? Yes, I, we are asking to you. Oh, I see, right. Yeah, well, I couldn't hear him very well. Um, any offers on uh, whether you use a 6.4 or an 8.6 here? Yeah? Uh -huh. So who's 464? How many of you are 464? So a few 464. Anyone 486? The, the measurement here is probably more than 4 millimeters because yeah. if it's 3 times 5 French... Uh, well, that's an eyeballing rather than a yeah, proper measurement. Yeah, but it, it's expansile duct, so I, yeah. I would err on the uh, side of caution. And I think I, sometimes when you put a sheath through the duct, you'd repeat an angiogram, you may get a better idea, but otherwise I'd go for an 86. Yeah, and, and sometimes they're not circular. So uh, I think the, in terms of voting, it was pretty much equal uh, 86 to 64, but I think uh, Shaq's point is very valid, and uh, at one year, putting an 86 device would be probably more appropriate. All cat lab is fully agree with the Shaq. Good. So we, try, we decided to put uh, 68 because it's not, uh, it will not be too oversized and it's not like AST. We don't care too much for the oversizing. Yes, agreed. Okay, it's, uh, sometimes it makes guarantee, so we decided to put uh, 6.8 ADO1 Amplatzer PDA Ocleder. Joe, Just can I ask a question? Just, yes, sure, Did sure. Oh, I want to make a comment. Did we measure the uh, diameter from the Arctic side whether it can take the 8x6 or not? Uh, it's about 9. And 8x6, it means the 8 is in the aorta plus 4. So, so you need 12. So 9, you have to, to calculate correct. Uh, to calculate the aortic diameter or the length or the okay. narrowest diameter? If the aortic diameter, I Omar, don't know whether... Omar, I understand you, but there is no risk for this patient since the aorta is enlarged and we don't afraid of the being coarctation. We are very free about the coarctation, so we prefer to, uh, 6 to 8. I understand your calculation. Yeah. We have to add to 8 to 6 more, but in this patient, the ampulla is enlarged, and uh, also, although we measured it 9 millimeter, no doubt about the coarctation. Okay. okay, continue. Just continue. We put 8. Look. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why? We opened it too much. Because uh, we. Uh, help our colleagues, uh, Dr. Shevket, to make this patient. I in fact, we can uh, erase this, but we didn't. So don't, wo don't worry. The ADO device is very uh, user-friendly, as you know. If you, if you don't use the device... Please don't keep showing that Okay. It gives me a heart attack. <laughs> go, go ahead. Then, just for... Uh, show to you what it's the procedures of the closures. We know it's far from the doctors, we know, but we want to also to you know it. Go ahead, Devon. So you're using the trachea as your um, landmark, Marker, yes? yes, of course. Then we put the uh, device back, all system. Inject, right. Then we open the device. Joe, you can see how it's very constricted in the middle. Yes. And you know what happened? Nitinol is tend to be 
go back to the original shape. And yeah. sometimes it will embolize immediately after you, re you release it, it will go back to the original. But it, it's quite well pinched, so it should stay in position, hopefully. We all uh, decided that it's safe and a quite narrowing part. So we are happy about this image. What about you? Well, to me it looks good, and I, I think it's not impinging on the aorta. I think you've got good uh, um, pinching of the device, so I think it will be stable. Personally, I would be happy and release it, unless there are any objections. Anyone objecting to release? Uh, Tarek. It's too late. <laughs> but we, we prefer to hear. Johnny? Mario wants to make a comment. Yeah. Uh, looking at this picture, when the delivery cable is still attached to the, to the, the, the, the device. device, well, the shape of the device is completely different as opposed to where the device is released. You see? After release, the left disc, let's say left disc, is flatter in the aorta. Yeah. Because uh, we give attention to the device yeah. with the... Uh, so which is okay, everything is okay. Yes. However, I would have loved to have the picture after release, before release. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, I so do, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it looks like we there we is a compression the stable. Again in before releasing. And after release, can you do a final yes. angio? And then I think we're done. It looks like a good result. Yeah, it certainly doesn't have too much pinching. So I think 8.6 was the right size. If you put a 6.4, there would be, I think, a, a, a reasonable chance of embolization. Joe, uh, there's a quick comment here, shan. and that is the size looks fine. The um, length of the uh, device maybe just a little shorter than you'd like it. And so sometimes the Oclitec uh, similar diameter d device, long shank, gives you a little bit more length, length into the primary artery and a little bit more security. Uh, and this is fine, but um, yeah. just li gives you a little bit more length. I think that's a good comment. It's a slightly different Something design and, uh, and the longer one uh, may give you a little bit more uh, security. Yeah. Tarek? No, the, the Oculotech, I agree. If you want to keep it larger and the both end, it will be better because the end in the pulmonary is slightly larger than the waist. So it may be a good one. Uh, equally, I think f functionally it's going to be fine, and I think uh, being short, it minimizes the risk of left pulmonary artery uh, stenosis. So thank you very much. Uh, that was an excellent uh, um, case. And we'll ask. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Mansur, to continue, please. Sorry.